welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. So today we're going to be talking about a little thing I like to call rabbit mat. So one of the number one things that I see online and that we get questions on is if I'm starting to raise meat rabbits for my family, how many rabbits do I need? So we're going to break it down for you. So on the principle of having one buck, okay, so one boy, Two does. This is how it's all going to break down. So the first time you're going to breed your does, provided that you went ahead and you bought breeding age stock January 1, you're going to breed your does. Okay? 31 days later, you're going to get a Kindle. So apparent about February 1st, give or take you're going to kindle. Okay. Now on average, your average doe is going to give you eight kits. So you're going to have eight kits times two. So we're going to say eight kits and eight kits. Now these first kits, remember you're going to want to wean them at about six weeks. So that means that on March 15th, give or take, you're going to wean your first 16 kits and you're going to rebreed mom. Okay. At which point, about 31 days later, you are going to be looking at, say, just to keep it handy, we're going to say April 15th. You're going to Kindle. Eight more kits times both of your does. And the reason that you always breed more than one doe at a time is because um, if something happens to mom, you have a secondary doe to go ahead and um, foster off to. Okay, now at the same time that your, your mom is kindling on April 15th, these initial kits are now ready for harvest. So you're also going to harvest. And what you're going to be harvesting here is you're going to be harvesting these kits up here. So you're going to have 16 kits. And they should, because now we're talking, they're already 10 weeks, they should be about 5 pounds live weight. So what you're going to get out of this kindling is you're going to get 80 pounds live weight. And because you get about a 60% actual um, rate of meat once you've harvested, you're going to get 48 pounds of actual meat. Okay, so that's going to be your first harvest. All right, so continuing on, so um, mom is kindled here, so now we're going to go another six weeks, and now we're at June, and we're going to be about June 1st there, give or take. We are going to wean these kits and rebreed. At which point, as we know, we're going to go roughly 31 days again, and now we're at July. So around July 1st, we're going to Kindle, and we're going to have eight kits and eight kits. Because again, it's going to vary. And just like before, when we got to this Kindle, these kits are now ready for harvest. Okay. And as we know, 16 kits at five pounds live weight is gonna give us 80 pounds live weight, 48 pounds of meat. All right, so continuing on our July Kindle, we are now going to be in August, around the 15th of the month. We are once again going to wean and rebreed. Okay, so since you're getting the hang of this, we're going to be a month in. So now we are to September 15th. We are also going to Kindle again. 
especially if I can spell. <laughs> Kindle 8 kits, N8 kits. And as we know, we are back to harvesting. So these guys that were born in July are now ready for another harvest. So now we're going to go another six weeks from that, which is going to put us around, should be if my math is right, around November 1st. We're going to wean and we're going to rebreed again, which is going to put us somewhere around uh, December 1. We're going to be kindling again, and this will be our last kindle for all of these does in this year. At that same time, we're also gonna harvest the last of these kits. So we're gonna go ahead and harvest our September kits. And then our December kits we'll be harvesting sometime in the new year. Okay, so if you've kind of done the math along with me, what you know that you've got is you've got five Kindles in this first year. Oops. And that you've produced somewhere around 80 rabbits. Or 80 fryers. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is a very aggressive schedule and really tough on a doe. If you've seen some of the um, articles from like Mother Earth News and other things, they'll actually tell you that you can rebreed your doe when her fit babies are a month old. Go ahead and leave her in. You can still wean at six weeks and you're only going to give her two weeks off by herself. Now this is really hard on a doe. They have a really hard time rebounding from, from poor flesh condition. Um, you're more likely to get aborted litters, miss litters, that sort of thing. So I wouldn't recommend it. To be honest, I don't know that I'd recommend this. But if you're you're doing just meat breeding, this is a schedule that you can keep up with that is not overly hard on your dough because when you're weaning her babies off, she's getting a full month by herself while she's growing that next batch of kits inside. So although I don't recommend it, it's not a great, great schedule. It is something that if you're just doing meat, it's doable. The other thing, so in this, we have actually produced 360 pounds live weight of meat. It's a lot of meat, right? If you've seen the articles, a lot of them will say, oh, rabbits, you can produce 300 pounds of meat in a year. Sort of. That's live weight. What you're actually looking at is 192 pounds of processed meat. Because again, rabbits are going to give you about a 60% yield. So... While 360 sounds impressive, you're really not going to get that. Keep in mind that if you're using anything with a Flemish Giant in it, it can be even worse than that. Because they're a bigger bone breed, it's not unusual to only get about a 50% yield. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, will this feed my family? Keep in mind that according to U.S. statistics, 270 pounds is the average amount of meat that an average person in the United States consumes. So while that seems like an awful lot, and if you've got kids, it's probably gonna be far less than that, of course. When you look at 270 pounds, five kindling give you 192 pounds of processed meat. You're very, very close to providing for a family for at least a quarter of your meat needs off of a, three rabbits, one buck, two does. Now, if you're going to use such an aggressive schedule like this and go through and, and do five kindlings a year, here would be my recommendation. I would probably go ahead and replace my buck annually. Just because bucks are a whole lot easier to come by than, than does. So what I would do, I would go ahead and buy a new buck around the first part of the year, every single year. Remember that kindling that we had way back in July? I would probably go ahead and hold a doe out of each one of my does, my breeding does now, 
and I would go ahead and replace my original girls. The reason for that is you're going to breed this to dough into the ground to where by the age of two, if she's not having problems, I'm going to be really surprised if she's fertile anymore. Um, it just gets harder on them as they go. Can you keep breeding a doe? Yeah, but I don't think at five kindles a year that you're going to get past about age two. We breed our girls to where most of my girls have three to four litters in a year. And they are still reproductively sound at three and heading into four years old. However, by age four, they're done. Um, every now and then I get a stray litter out of an older doe. But really, by age four, they're completely finished. And that's with a far less aggressive breeding schedule. So if you're going to do the five kindles a year, hey, no problem. That's kind of what, you know, that's part of the meat breeding thing. Just go ahead and replace your does. Now, if you're going to replace your does, here's my recommendation. Do not process mom until that, that younger doe has proven herself. So what that might mean is for a very short amount of time in the next year, you might have four breeding does. Don't do that for very long unless you absolutely want the extra meat. But the reason you do that is, sure enough, and I've had this happen to me, you hold back a really nice doe, and for whatever reason, she will not breed. It happens. Or uh, maybe she's a terrible mom. That happens, too. It's not unusual for a first-time doe to actually have her babies all over the wire, screw up the nest box, forget to feed them, forget to pull hair. There's a lot of variables there. So if you're going to replace your does every year, just make sure that when you're doing it, you're going to go ahead and, and save back mom until you've proven that dough. Now, the other thing about this really aggressive schedule is keep in mind that your fall, like late fall breedings, where we're talking about uh, rebreeding in November, may not happen. Rabbits are light dependent. So it's not unusual past about mid-October for your, your conception rates to absolutely go to garbage. Not every doe will breed year-round. Uh, a lot of your meat breeding um, breeds, like we've talked about in the other video, are better at it than others. Uh, my Americans, because they were originally a meat breed, typically will breed year-round, where my Harlequins, it's about 50-50. The other thing is, if you are in a warm climate, keep in mind that you might not want to breed in June and July. Um, you have a lot of problems with keeping mom warm, or, you know, cool and comfortable in the warm months. And babies will burn up in nest boxes. It does happen where they, because mom pulls fur to keep them warm overnight, sometimes they get a little hot. Um, I, when we lived in Mississippi, I lost litters to the heat. It's just kind of the way it works. So when you read these articles that say every doe can produce 300 pounds of meat in a year, I call bubkiss. The math proves it. I really don't think that's going to happen. But this is my recommendation. If you're serious about being a meat breeder and just a meat breeder, this is how you make it happen. So if you have comments, go ahead and leave them in the um, comment section. If you have questions, leave them there too. <laughs> and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Next video, I'm going to talk about feeding your rabbits. And then the next video after that, we're actually going to look at rabbits doing the deed. How to go ahead and sex them, make sure that they are ready for breeding, and then actually breeding them. So that's coming up in the next few weeks. If you have other things you'd like me to make a video on, please leave them down in the comment section. This state, this channel is all about you guys. We enjoy doing it. We enjoy teaching, but I can't teach you, you know, if I don't know what you're asking for. Okay. So that's it for today on Sprigger Homestead, and we'll see you next time.